My name is Lee Kennard. I'm a part owner in Kennard Farms Incorporated. We are a 10,000 acre crop farm that also is a dairy farm. This existing dairy is, is a brand new dairy, but the dairy across the road, what we call our home farm, where mom and dad actually started the farm. Again, that was started in 1947 by my mom and dad with 12 cows, 12 young stock. Um, my mother always referred to this as a 4-H experiment gone bad. <laughs> All of our animals up until this point actually come from our original 14 seed stock. We've never had to go out and buy cattle. Um, this has been a closed herd up until this point. Obviously at this point we're doubling our herd size. We were at about 3,500 cows here six months ago, uh, currently in the middle of doubling our herd size to about 7,000 milking. Um, now we're going out and buy animals. Again, we're going to be buying registered. We're real big into genetics, purebred herds. Um, we also are big believers in feeding lots and lots of forage. We've purposely bred very large framed animals. We like breeding for longevity. We like breeding big cows that are capable of producing a lot of milk. Uh, we typically ship, we look to ship about 100 pounds per cow per day. And so our last dairy, the home farm, was built 15 years ago. We actually started milking in there. January 3rd of 2001, so right about this time of year. It had its limitations. We were 100% natural ventilation. Worked great probably 90% of the year, but we weren't always happy with the cooling and we weren't always happy with the dead of winter conditions. Um, that was kind of what got us thinking about the forced air ventilation versus the natural concept. Uh, we were capable of making very, very high production um, with the natural ventilation. However, um, the unhappiness was the amount of water used with the sprinkler system. Obviously, all of that water had to be hauled away as manure. Uh, the other unhappiness was, as I stated, you know, the dead of winter. Um, pretty hard to control your climate at all. Right. You're within about five degrees of outside here in Green Bay. That means you get down to 20 degrees below zero in the barn. It's a little chilly to work on those cows. Yeah. It, it was brutal on the people, and at some point, you really lose efficiency of gain, you lose efficiency in feed conversion, which we track very closely. We were feeding about two and a half to three pounds extra dry matter through the brutal periods to maintain milk production. Um, so obviously there's a cost to that. You're putting a lot of extra feed through, collecting a lot of extra manure, putting a lot of extra calories to gain the same thing. On the heat side of things, the huge expense with hauling all of that water away, pumping the water, putting it over the backs of the cows. We didn't lose production, but we, there was a cost. It was, it was, in my mind, an unacceptable cost. How did you first uh, <laughs> hear about Munters? Actually, um, saw your, your machinery installed in another large dairy in the area. It was the milk source dairies. I was very impressed at the job that was done. I was very impressed when the owners and I spoke about the thought process that had been put into that barn. Obviously cross vents were fairly new on the scene when that barn was built. Um, and also we actually heard a little more about you with the now deceased John Smith, yeah. I believe. Sure. Um, and he had mentioned you guys had been pretty pretty on the front line of several of his designs. We wanted, we like buying machinery that you set and forget. We wanted experience. We didn't want to be reinventing the wheel right. as we did this. We looked at some of the competitors. Obviously we had a lot of stir type fans in our mm -hmm. existing dairy and you find out that boy you can go way too cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean there are some that the bearings fall out of and all kinds of things like that. Um, there was a lot more science necessary on this installation and I guess I was very impressed when we began talking. You very early on personally started attending our planning meetings um, and had a lot of good input into our planning meetings. I mean, no, hey, we appreciate that. It was really nice to be able to use your science, your computer programs, and say, hey, if this is what we do, this is, this is going to be the end result, yeah. which has really worked out well for us. What made you land on the cross of it? Obviously, you know, the big driving one here was our footprint was definitely not a limiting factor, but we looked at it and said, okay, how can we maximize cow efficiency, people efficiency, um, there's no doubt about it. We kept coming back to the clear winner was the cross vent mm -hmm. on that one. Um, we wanted to push the envelope a little bit on, on group sizes. We wanted to push the envelope just a little bit on you know, total number of cows milked through the parlor. Um, and I think that was pretty clearly what kept bringing us back to, hey, we're going to need mechanical ventilation. And then at that point, it became very 
clear in our mind. If a guy's mechanical, um, on our you know on our setup, on our ground, on our site, it made very good sense for it to be across. Our heat dissipation, I think, is a bit greater than we had anticipated. Um, we've been seeing numbers that you did not calculate for us. Our little goofy thermometers have showed us a 21 degree cooling on yeah. the perfect day. And I know I thought, well, maybe those sensors aren't real accurate. <clears throat> you know, so we've been doing some of the handheld digitals, those kinds of things, and I've seen some huge differences outside to in. Obviously, we're closing that up a little bit on the hot, humid days, mm -hmm. but it's still the kind of thing, it's an oppressive day, you walk into the barn and it's still like, oh, you know, this is comfortable. Yeah. The cows are comfortable, they're laying down, milk production hasn't suffered. You asked me what the surprise was. Um, I guess the surprise has been granted. We have not been through brutal winter mm -hmm. weather. Um, I'm hoping we aren't for the next <laughs> 10 years or so. But I am amazed at how nice it is in this barn as compared to our naturally ventilated. I don't think we have to be 25 degrees below zero inside the barn anymore. We don't want it to be. <laughs> uh, no, we don't want it to be. But indeed, if we've got to be zero versus 25 right. below, that's a huge difference. Yeah. That's a huge difference. Managing through zero is one thing. 25 below is, really is ridiculous. Yeah. I know darn well the people taking care of the cows <laughs> are definitely happier. Um, that we don't have to take you know any, any big time audit or anything. I'm certain by the smiles on the faces because unfortunately with the natural, um, if you're not on top of it, all of a sudden you're behind it. Hey, geez, everything's dripping. And, and you know, so you overventilate rather than take the chance. And several times you get into that morning hour where, hey, it's nicer outside than it is in the barn, um, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that here. I mean, it's, it's definitely, we've made a better environment, I believe. You know, I do think, I genuinely believe, you know, the old system, we said 100 pounds of milk was our goal. Mm -hmm. And with a properly stocked barn and properly fed, we'd reach our goal. I truly believe there's 10% more milk in this barn. Not just because of the ventilation system. There are other improvements. Sure. But I do believe the ventilation system is going to have a, a very big part to play in that extra 10%. So if another dairyman came up and asked you about munters and the system you have here, I mean, what would you say? How would you describe it? <clears throat> what are your just general thoughts? Um, so far, those thoughts have been, hey, can we come and see your system? And I think the system pretty well speaks for itself. Um, you know, we walk people through and they're, they're impressed. But then they also look at the fans. They realize that, hey, you know, this is, uh, maybe it is a superior product to some of the others we've been seeing out there. There's no doubt about it. They appreciate the fact that obviously somebody installed this that knew how the heck this thing was going to operate and run. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's kind of sold itself when we talk to other dairymen. Absolutely, I believe your, your blade, and boy, it's been a while since we've shopped this out, but your blade, if I remember correctly, is a cast, cast one-piece yeah. aluminum. Um, that was a clear winner. Um, you know, we looked very heavily into that. Mm -hmm. um, your drive mechanism, we liked the bearing setup, and we liked the idler and the tightener setup a little bit more. Again, we look for simplicity here. Um, we look for things that aren't going to need a lot of maintenance. Yeah, yeah that whole concept was so new to us mm -hmm. that um, it was very clear that yours was a cleaner, simpler design. Um, the concept was exactly the same as the competition, um, but it was quite clear to me that your collection chambers were a little better. Your distribution system for saturating the pad was definitely a little simpler. There was some definite pros and I guess all pros to your system. Good. Very early on, Jonathan, you were part of our design team. Uh, we had options. Um, some good friends who are dealers in the neighborhood selling competitive equipment. Um, you were absolutely key to doing what we did here. You were professional, um, very attentive to our project. Kind of made us feel like we were the only project out there. And I'm sure you, you had a lot of hours you were putting in when you were helping us design this thing. Um, you made the long drive up here on a regular routine basis to attend our planning meetings, our building meetings. Um, I have nothing but praise. You know, so as we were building, obviously, um, this was pretty useful information. Jonathan actually took our true prints and actually applied his machinery to our true prints. That was, you know, without a doubt, that was the biggest advantage to going with your system. Uh, we had down to the T, every I dotted, every T crossed, 
as far as what the electricians were going to need. There was no surprises at the end of the project. They knew exactly what they were going to need for wiring these things in. Every detail was laid out in your drawings, coordinated very, very well. The coordination was phenomenal, and, and I do give you, and obviously your company, I mean, you've got good backing behind you, but um, that, was, that was very smooth. I mean, we're not next door neighbors by any stretch of the imagination, but um, yeah, I did bypass some next door neighbors that could have offered a service it, would it have been as good of a service? No, I don't think so. I think there was some real value added. What is a word for value for the dollar spent? Is, is really the word I'm searching for here. Because um, I do feel there was a lot of value for the dollar that we spent.